Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the lifestyle of a Magic the Gathering Pro and I'm going to use Matthew Fox as an example. He is a full-time streamer, full-time MTGO grinder, and the best standard player so good that he has to steal from the tournament organizers. Now, it is interesting. He is a big streamer, as big as you can get, and he risks his reputation. But not just for Magic. I want to make a point that the dream of being a Magic Pro is very ill-advised because even if you do reach the top, maybe for one year you can make over six figures, but there's no cumulative effect, meaning you have the majority of that winnings would be tournament based so magic folks pro player and streamer tries to steal a promo at nationals gets caught and dq'd cedric phillips who is a little different from most magic pros or commentators in that he had the engineering job before going to magic now the reason that this is important magic isn't really a resume builder. So if you work at a startup, let's say you work at the worst startup in Houston and you're building WordPress and you don't have any WordPress experience and it's very disorganized, you still have something to add to your resume even in the worst conditions. Uh, you still probably learned a little bit about WordPress and plugins and how to make a website. So for your next job, you kind of are a developer, kind of not but you can at least say that you're a website designer and you have some portfolio pieces that you worked at the startup. The first startup I joined was exactly like that. Uh, one of my paychecks were bounced all the time, but I was really into the learning, into the business side, and I'm really glad I joined it because now I own a business which sells websites, right? So back to Matthew. Judge, I didn't didn't collect my deck list during round one, go to hand it in. They asked, did I receive a goodie bag? I said, no, cause free promo. That was lying to a judge and I got called on it. I'm not a cheater, just a very stupid and shady person. And this is from, uh, he's from England. So the tournament cost 40 pounds. Uh, people were buy listing the promo at 25, which is good value. Uh, it is incredibly good value. And he goes ahead and gets another promo. Now, whenever you search his name from now until the end of times, he's going to be associated with stealing a relatively inexpensive Magic promo card. And that is his brand. I know that he's been trying really hard to rebrand himself, to be something that... But at the end of the day, a person who's willing to steal a 20-pound promo card is... Would that be someone that you would hire if you were a manager? Would this be someone that you would trust? Um, let's assume that he is a um, cashier. Or he, he's in charge of a, he gets a company credit card. Uh, our employees have employee credit cards. Now their limit is about 250 a month. And of course, some of them, Jess's limit is around 1500. Uh, but a new employee would get a customer credit card and they would be around 250 being limit and that would be for coffee runs or snacks or something like that very simple stuff uh, tow booths if they're traveling gas and i wouldn't trust this guy with any type of money yeah because if you're going to steal something that small and that with such a big impact so the consequence is very big on his career not just in magic but in life then you're going to steal anything you could get your hands on. You're gonna steal iPads, iMacs, MacBooks. I mean, would you trust this guy? Um, a lot of times at my company, we have two keys and I have one key and then whoever stays the latest has the second key. Would you trust Matthew to give him the key when everyone's gone? No, because the next day there would be nothing left. If you're gonna steal a promo, you're gonna steal an iPad if it's as simple as stealing a promo. So part of the bad part about 
uh, magic is we don't always accept um for instance i'll make it very clear when someone has done a bad action very few people criticize uh, most people make excuses and here we're making excuses it's not really his fault it's the uh, system's fault the system of handing goodie bags isn't correct how can we trust the magic players when the system is not correct um, you can also talk about uh, the Dan video where he did get disqualified and he was a he was hired by the local store and he cheated the player. The player went on my YouTube channel. He's now blocked because he keeps defending Dan, and that's just highly illogical. The guy who he cheated, there's the guy who lost going to the pro tour. His dream is in the comment section defending Dan to for nail. On the video, he got caught cheating on video. And then later on, when I made the second video, once he was disqualified six months later, he's still defending him. I mean, it's almost like a support system for people who cheat and steal, and there's no consequences for it. But in a real-life scenario, if, you, if this guy had a real job and he stole from his job, let's say $25, uh, I'm petty cash something, you would instantly fire him. He would have a difficulty getting any job if he stole from me and we've had a one social media specialist do this, I will tell the other companies and it would be unwise to put me as a reference because I'm going to tell them the truth that you stole an iPad from me. And, you know, I'm not comfortable and I want to be comfortable with allowing you to work at my office when there is so much equipment. And it's not just the computers and stuff. Obviously, there's client list and client work. Um, and the work is probably more valuable than any of the electronics. So here we have someone who openly admits that he stole a relatively, a relatively useless card that isn't worth all that much money. It's not like stealing a Black Lotus like Alex Pacini is doing, but he sacrifices everything to get that extra 20 pounds. Or what's that, $30. I mean, what other job, what other scenario would this person be commended for this action? For stealing? I cannot think of, you know, I, I can't think of a situation where this would logically make sense to trade your reputation for twenty five for twenty five dollars. Now I've always said this. This is probably not the first time he stole. This is not the first time he cheated. He is after all a magic pro. This is the first time he got caught. So being caught doesn't mean it's the only time you did something bad. There has to be an assumption that for every time you got caught, you did 10, 10, 10 times that action. And that assumption is actually baked into law. So when you get caught for stealing something, you go to jail. Now, if you get caught for stealing something very valuable, then you go to jail for a longer time. But let's assume that you got caught for stealing something not that valuable, you still get punished. So that item isn't worth you go to jail for six months, but it's assumed that you were stealing this whole time. So he lied. At the very least, he lied. He stole. And he did not cheat during gameplay, but he cheated during real life. So the uh, promo was selling for $23 or $30 in trade. And people are saying, went for high EV play, got punished. Pro players are so poor. I don't feel like lecturing. I just think this episode will represent a significant case to understand what's a policy towards attempting to steal tournament material or whatever. And no other case would you have, I mean, if a guy's getting at our company $700 a week payroll every two weeks, he gets $700. Why would they want to steal a $25 item? It would make no sense because they jeopardize the entire job. Here, 
his entire job is being a magic personality, being a magic streamer, playing Magic the Gathering online, being a magic grinder, a pro player. That's how he identifies. That's his entire life. To stake your entire reputation on this, and a lot of you will say, it's only one mistake. It's his only mistake. I am always of the belief, like, so I told you about the story. Um, we recently had to disconnect ourselves from a worker. And the worker had a brother who was, uh, he's in jail now. He got, uh, and, and you know, there's reports on it. If I gave you the name, you could pull up all the reports and read about it. But I'll summarize it. He was a sexual offender. And that's just really not acceptable uh, to me at any level. Uh, and of course, you know, I don't want to be connected even if it's from a worker. And yes, the worker is not, you know, she's not at fault, but at the same time, it's really bad. It's a bad image. So we, we, we uh, left on good terms, I feel like, but at the end of the day, you cannot be connected. Um, you cannot be connected to people who steal, people who cheat, people who do heinous acts. Um, that is, they will drag you down to hell. Um, there's no other way for me to say it. Because if someone has a brother who's like that and all the other personal issues, that those personal issues will infect my company. And it had. It had infected my company because, you know, everyone's talking about it. Everyone's, you know, saying, oh, you know, you could have done this. I mean, when there's so much stress, and I made a video on my other channel, uh, you can watch that video, about uh, someone whose life is very stressful um, they can't do a good job because they have too much to deal with and they can't concentrate at, for your company. And that's what's happening here is you have someone who is very obviously very financially unstable and he's making a very, very bad decision based on an extra $25. If he had money, if he had a salary or if he was getting consistently paid that $25 it wouldn't it wouldn't even occur to him to lie because it wouldn't be it's not it's not that it's not worth it to him it's just that it's so illogical to do it that no one would do it anyway no one would give up that reputation that salary for 25 bucks anyway bye guys